Hey, ke, hey, ke, hey, ke, hi everybody! I hope you're all having a good day. I hope you're all smiling and enjoying your lovely day. So in this following tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you on how to utilize Vignon's blend shape adjustment settings so that way you can be able to utilize blend shape weights and blend shape curves in order to fine tune and enhance your face tracking. Whether you're iPhone, Android, or webcam using Vignon, you can do all that. So let's go ahead and get started. And I will say, if you're an absolute beginner at Vignon, please check out my other pre-existing tutorials um, that I made for beginners. But of course, I also recommend joining the um, Suvi's Discord server so you can learn more about Vignon. But even then, this should be fine for absolute beginners regardless but I just want to make sure that you check out my other tutorials or Suvi's tutorials so you are aware of the um, the Vignon UI. Now I will also say there are some changes um, as well with Vignon. It grows really fast so keep that in mind. Um, regardless though, what we're going to do in order to get to our blend shape adjustment, we're going to go to settings. We're going to go into general settings here and then I'm going to go over here and then you're going to click on the scroll bar here the bar here and then you're gonna move all the way down now depending on which tracking you are if you're an iPhone uh, you know utilizing VTube studio uh, or even if you're Android and you're using meow face specifically you can use this layer here um, so there's meow face VTube studio which VTube studio yes can connect to um, Vignon to be used on a dream all and then I facial mode cap um, and then there's also the webcam. So if you are Android and using Droidcam, for instance, or you are using just your normal webcam, then you could be able to, you know, select your camera here and basically adjust all these things here. Uh, but basically, you're gonna click on blend shape adjustment here, which for mine, I'm on iPhone for my case, so I will go ahead and click on that. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the blend shape here. Now if you have no idea what these blend shape movements are, which they should be self-explanatory, but in case you don't know, in the description there is the AirKid developer website which shows you how the blend shapes look like, their names, and how it looks like on the model. So I definitely check, you know, would check that out. Um, I sworn that there is also another version where it's void specific uh, to also help you out in case the other in case the Apple's head model is too creepy for you so if I hope uh, future me after this video will find the link and post it so if you need to know the reference especially for a void model that should hopefully be in the description and if not then you can slap kind in the face so either way what we're going to do, we are going to select the blink here. Now, basically, I have my things here, though, but just to basically show you, the weight is basically what will allow your uh, blend shapes um, to actually be more effective. This is definitely very useful for blinking, or if your mouse is way too small and you want to make it, you know, bigger in movement. Um, so, let's say, for instance, my left blinking, which um, I have my tracking mirrored, so basically, if I were to have the weight very low, you can see how my other eye does not blink at all. So it's very important that you adjust the weight accordingly so that way you can have proper blinking. This is definitely very useful for webcam tracking uh, or basically just utilizing media pipe because media pipe they don't have a uh, pretty good blink tr train data apparently. I don't know how, don't know why, but that just happened. But either way, at least this helps uh, utilize making sure media pipe can have its best quality uh, despite the weird training data or the work in progress training data that is. Now, with that being said, now weight curve here. So basically this will allow you to adjust uh, the transitioning of your blend shape. So it can be pretty useful if you want to get some smoothness into uh, your tracking or it can adjust how effective your blend shapes are as well. So yeah, you can also utilize the weight here, but this can not only uh, affect the transition, but can also affect, uh, I guess, a little bit of the weight as well. So. If it's closer to this area of the graph, the less effective the, the blinking will be. It'll still try to, of course, you know, blink. Basically, you can see it's blinking. Uh, so it's not removing it entirely, but it will make it struggle a lot, basically. But the closer we are here, the more effective it will be. Um, the more effective it will be here, basically. Um, now, of course, you can still keep it by default here um, because this is pretty much perfect for the most part but again if you want to adjust your 
transition of the blend shape, you can utilize that. So if by any chance, let's say for instance, you want sort of an S curve, that will definitely make it where your, you know, S for smooth, it will make it where it's slower. Um, but of course, um, that's up to you. So if you want something a little bit more smoother, you can definitely utilize the S curve for that. If you want something uh, for your blend shape to move a lot more faster, then I would recommend something like this curve so it's a little bit more faster in movement if you want that. If you want something a little bit more slower and ineffective, then I would go for a curve like this basically. So, yeah. Um, and then if you want something that's just, you know, linear basically, uh, something that kind of goes, um, I guess, constant movement, but then again, this also goes constant movement, but it's kind of like this goes from like, like basically a little less effective to more effective, if that makes sense. It's kind of hard for me to explain the right words. But if you prefer this, depending on the blend shape, you can definitely uh, put it to linear if you want. And also, in case you're wondering how I add the curves, just right click to add more curves, basically. Um, and then right click again to remove the curves. I just wanted to show you the um, different curve types that you might want to utilize. And then, of course, there's also curves like this one here. So there's this curve, for instance. What this will do, basically, is that it will make it where it's kind of like, I guess, sort of like, you know how, like, the jiggle eyes are, sort of? It kind of gives, like, that slight sort of effect where um, it will be very effective, but then it'll kind of slow down on the effectiveness and then that so there's that i guess if you're looking for an effect like that but do be mindful it can make your you know for instance the blink can be a little tricky so i would probably recommend something like this graph for the mouse uh that's kind of something that, what i sort of did with my uh jaw open sort of a little bit different i kind of have mine where it's kind of like this for instance um but just for an example basically and that's pretty much, at least in a nutshell, uh, definitely play around with the graph though, but the lines I showed you are pretty much like examples of what you can do, and it really just depends on your model, what you want, so definitely play around with the graph as best that you can, but hopefully those examples at least explain like, you know, what the heck, uh, so yeah. You can also definitely be able to copy the curve as well. So let me just go ahead and do that. So let's say, for instance, I'm going to go to jaw open, right? And, oh, actually, mine's, my graph was a little different. So this is basically my graph for the um, jaw open, right? And let's say I want this for the blinking, right? So I'm going to click on copy. And then I'm going to go into the blink, for instance, and then I'll paste it. And it'll basically paste the curve. This is a lot more convenient and definitely very useful. So, yeah. Um, definitely save some time if you want to, like, you know, let's say for the eye blend shape, for instance, you want them all to have the same curve. Um, you could basically be able to copy and paste through all those, I, you know, the eye blend shape, basically. So, yeah. All right. Besides that, though, let's say, for instance, you want to share your settings, right? You took a lot of time adjusting the curves, and let's say you really want to share it. You know, you, you want other people to utilize it because uh, you think those settings are good, or other people could benefit from the settings you provide. You could definitely be able to share it with other people uh, by clicking on the export adjustments here. Uh, it will export as a an air kit Vignon uh, file. You can basically be able to share that with you know, people in Suvi's Discord server or Twitter or YouTube, wherever, basically, or even your close friends. Uh, or uh, you can have it as a for yourself for, like, you know, profiles in case, let's say, um, you, you know, you accidentally lose your settings or you're sw swapping uh, computers, for instance, and you want your settings to follow back. Uh, you could definitely do that. Um, now, also, if you, let's say, download a Vignon air kit file and you want to import those settings, then you just click on import adjustments and you're done, pretty much. It should be pretty simple to set up. But overall, in a nutshell, this is pretty much how you can utilize the weight and the curve so that way you can be able to have much more expressive blend shapes. Now, just to also quickly show you uh, before I end this, so general settings, I'm going to go ahead right now and I'm going to turn on my um, my uh, webcam tracking real quick. Okay, so I have my um, my webcam tracking right now, and of course, um, it's not as best as um, you know iPhone tracking, of course. 
But I definitely will say, uh, because of the graph, which I'll show you here. So basically, blend shape adjustment here. You can definitely be able to utilize it because now, as you can see, um, originally I had it where my uh, my blinking would not work properly, but now my blinking does work, so it's really good. So I just wanted to at least show a few examples. So basically, with uh, jaw open, I actually have a different graph for this one, uh, surprisingly. But I think I could change the graph a bit more, though. Um, so I'll actually uh, just kind of quickly show you what I mean. So I'll copy the graph. I will go ahead and get rid of some curves here, for instance. I'm going to have it where it's going to be like this, and then this, and then um, something like that. So, yeah, you can basically mess uh, with the curve and such. So you can have, like, some, some little effect, I guess, uh, depending. Or at least I'm trying to make my mouth move more. But I guess it's a little opposite, so I'll just go ahead and paste back, back the curve. But I just wanted to, like, quickly show you... Um, I think the graph is a little different for webcam, actually. Hmm. Let me see real quickly. Just wanted to make sure. Um, let's see. So this one. Uh, okay, so actually for webcam. Okay, now I just found this out during recording. So for webcam, it's different. So apparently, uh, if the curve is closer to zero, it's not going to be as effective. But if it's closer here, then it will be more effective. Um, now, do keep in mind, it might end up changing. I don't know if this is a bug. Uh, so if it does end up changing, uh, then disregard what I said in this part of the video, if it changes. Otherwise, uh, just mess around with the curve graph, see what effect you get. So, yeah. So either way, this will be at least how I get my jaw to move more with webcam, basically. So, yeah. And then you can definitely mess around with the blinking or the eyes. And then my blinking, I have mine where it's slightly like this. And then the weight is set to 2.5 uh, because it works better for webcam, at least for my case. Could be different for you, though. Um, but yeah, otherwise, uh, mess around with the blend shapes here. And do keep in mind for webcam... Uh, there is no tongue or cheek puff, but Google is going to be working on adding the training data, so we'll have to wait till Google um, updates MediaPipe with that training data, so hopefully we'll be able to get tongue and cheek puff for webcam tracking. We'll see what happens. But either way, though, um, that's pretty much it for me. I hope you have um, I hope you have fun experimenting with uh, Vignan's update, basically. So uh, if you have any other questions regarding Vignan, please let me know, and I'd be happy to help out. If by any chance you want to report any bugs or you need assistance with Vignan, I highly recommend please join Suvi's Discord server. Uh, Suvi will be there to help out, and also many other people as well from the community, so that way you can get, you know, you can have some assistance on learning Vignan, but not just Vignan, there could also be some other questions you can ask regarding uh, 3D related stuff. I'll also be there in the server as well um, if anyone needs some help with Vignan or anything like that. Um, and if by any chance you have any other tutorial requests, please let me know in the comments uh, or if you wish uh, if by any chance you wish to uh, DM me regarding uh, 3D stuff, like if you're confused on something, feel free. Uh, my socials are down below. I will video edit here. And definitely let me know if you guys need anything else though, but uh, that's pretty much it for me. And I hope you guys have a lovely day, and I hope that uh, this helps you out with getting expressive tracking. But yeah, with that being said though, bye bye everyone, I'll see you guys next time.